Um, well, thank you. Thank you um, for working together earlier today, for giving me the hope that I might have some chance at a career outside the Senate, uh, and for the opportunity uh, to join with a number of my colleagues uh, in thanking all of you and this incredibly talented panel uh, for your comments today. I believe at some point we'll hear from Senators Moran and Brown and Young as well, who've been great partners uh, in the work that we're doing together. Uh, and I'm thrilled that Congressman Donald Norcross is not just joining us, but is on the panel. Uh, I think both Congressman Norcross and David McKinley um, folks who have real experience as an electrician and a carpenter and the co-chairs of the House Building Trades Caucus uh, have a lot to bring uh, to all of us who are members uh, who don't have uh, the relevant deep experience that he brings to this conversation. Um, to, and to the folks from this old house, uh, both on the panel uh, and um, our um, host today, um, thank you for sharing your insights uh, into the importance of the career paths that are possible for young Americans through apprenticeships. Uh, you understand better than anyone uh, the passion, the challenge, the opportunity uh, that lies in front of young people uh, if they choose a career that leads through apprenticeships into the skilled trades. So thank you for lending your powerful national voices to this conversation today. Um, and as a Delawarean, forgive me, but I gotta do shout outs for my own. Um, I'm thrilled that we've got some folks here to help draw attention to the great groundwork that's been laid. Uh, in Delaware, we've got Jeremy McIntyre uh, and Trudy Petchen uh, from Polytech Adult Education. We've got Lynn Danner from Sussex Tech uh, and the folks at M. Davis and Sons, who I can see right there, um, who are joining us uh, here today in the audience. And I'm grateful um, that you've joined us uh, and that you've given me a lot of input on this issue. Um, Senator Moran and I started the Competitiveness Caucus a number of years ago uh, because we know senators on both sides of our aisle uh, are frustrated with how little progress we're making on the issues that really matter to Americans. Um, improving infrastructure, improving advanced manufacturing, investing more in R&D, and most important for today, um, developing the next generation of skilled workers, essentially, um, through apprenticeships. So, you know, on Capitol Hill, we spent a lot of time talking about K-12 education, about higher education, uh, but just not enough. Um, those are important, those are critical, but we don't spend enough time on the pathways that young people uh, can take to build a successful career. Um, apprenticeships, as I've said before and others say, is uh, sort of the other four-year degree. We're trying to get teachers and parents and young people to recognize that there is a paved pathway um, to a well-paying job uh, with a lifetime skill that you can use with little to no debt uh, and with high pay, high pay and high security, um, and that this is something that many more Americans should know about. The National Skills Coalition says there's 5.9 million job openings today. And there's 6.6 .6 million unemployed Americans. Seems to me a match made in heaven. But unfortunately, there is a skills gap between those who want to work and are not employed and those who have jobs that they are having trouble filling. And filling that should be relatively easy because American workers are smart. They're willing to work hard. We just need to connect the skills, the workers, and the opportunities better. Um, the data on apprenticeship programs is even better. It speaks for itself. 90% of those who complete apprenticeships land jobs with a starting wage that exceeds $60,000. That's above the national average salary. Um, and in most places, that's enough to raise a family, that's enough to get going, and to do that without the anchor of 20 or 30 or $40,000 in college debt. Um, I just wish more young people uh, knew about this. Um, last week, um, I did something that I thought was a lot of fun with the Newcastle County Votech schools. A uh, young man who grew up next door to me, I still call him little boy, but now he's a house. He's six foot seven, 305 pounds. He signed with the Minnesota Vikings as an offensive tackle. So we had a big party, right, NFL signing day. His parents were very proud, and so were all of his friends and neighbors. We decided to take that same excitement and energy and put it to work, giving some visibility to the young people who are doing something really important for their lives and their careers. And so we celebrated 13 high school seniors uh, who've been offered full-time jobs by local employers in Delaware uh, because of the high-quality, high-skill instruction they'd received in high school career and technical education programs. Uh, it was a great event, not, ju not just because it recognized that these students um, have accomplished a great deal by succeeding in their classes and their work study experience, but because they've got a bright career future ahead of them. Um, two of the recent graduates from Del Castle Technical High School are here with us today, uh, Jared Stowe and Josh Unger Bueller, um, along with the president of M. Davis. Could I ask all of you to stand up, please, just for a moment so we can give you a round of applause. Jared and, Jared and Josh finished their co-op experience with M. Davis and Sons, a fifth generation woman-owned industrial construction company, while they were in high school and are currently enrolled in the apprenticeship program to become welders. They work full time in the modular fabrication shop at M. Davis and attend the apprenticeship program two, weeks, two nights a week. 
And I think this is just a remarkable start to a great life. Um, so as you can tell, um, we have a robust apprenticeship program in Delaware, but I want to close by talking about one other thing we've done as a policy matter that I think broadens its reach. Um, in 2014, our former governor, Jack Markell, launched a statewide initiative called Delaware Pathways to Prosperity, a program designed to connect our young people um, with the registered apprenticeship model to address gaps in the Delaware workforce. Delaware Pathways helps to expand post-secondary options for young men and women by going into schools, talking to them, giving them a clear ways to choose um, a different path than going to a four-year college or university, and allows them to participate in pre-apprenticeship programs while they're still in school, and then helps them transition to apprenticeship training after graduation if that's the path that they choose. And I think that's the kind of program that we should be choosing to support here in Congress. Uh, Delaware Pathways, yes, supported the traditional skill building trades, but also helped create apprenticeship programs in other areas, uh, like home health care aides, where there wasn't an existing apprenticeship model. And I think apprenticeships is the sort of thing that deserves more support. So let me close with good news. Um, we, on a bipartisan basis in the last appropriations bill, appropriated $145 million to the U.S. Department of Labor to support the expansion of apprenticeship programs across our country. And that's $50 million over last year's level. That's something that was done by Republicans and Democrats in the House and the Senate. It doesn't get enough attention, but I frankly think it was a really good investment for our future. Um, I've got a bipartisan bill. You're gonna hear from one of the other co-sponsors, I hope, in a few minutes. Um, we're gonna introduce the Apprenticeship Hubs Across America Act of 2018, which is ba based on this Delaware Pathways model. It's a way that we can get something more done. But frankly, folks, there aren't enough Americans who know about the strength and power of apprenticeships. That's where this panel comes in. You're going to hear from a remarkably skilled and capable um, group of folks from a wide range of backgrounds who have worked in this field. And that's where you come in as well in terms of being able to help us spread this message. If you're a member of Congress, if someone who you have a relationship with in your state government or in your local education community um, doesn't recognize the value of apprenticeships, doesn't give it equal billing with going to college, please, let's pitch in and work on this together because we need to rebuild the skilled trades of this country and in that way we can rebuild the wealth, the prosperity, the security, and the abundance of this country. Thanks for a chance to be with you. Thanks for a chance to steal the mic for a few minutes. And thank you so much to a great panel.